All right. Ready? And three, two, one. Conversations. 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 Hello, hello, everybody. <laughs> this is old Toby and Hats back again for another <laughs> prolonged conversation. Welcome to Conversations with Old Toby and Hats. Conversations. Conversations. It's been a while. It's been a couple weeks since we've uh, had a chance to do this. Yes, it's been a while. Yeah, and so we just left our place. The uh, first little, it's down there. It's right down there. Yeah, down there around over there. So we're going to head out and try and find a new place where we're actually going to maybe do our first build and just kind of yeah. explore. We're in we're in uh, 1.10 pre-release 1. So, Ooh, um, fancy. So there's, yeah, new cool stuff like uh, polar bears and uh, those, what are those ice guys called? Uh... I forget what they're I don't called. Remember. Um, the and then there's fallen the, the one ravaged or something like that. Some, something like that. But they're pretty cool. Um, yeah. So All the cows uh, around. We should probably be uh, hunting these guys down. This is a long drop. That is a big drop. That looks really trippy. This is, so if if you don't know from previous episodes, we are using a texture pack that adds in a lot of variety to a block. Oh, yeah, yeah. B00100, YouTuber extraordinaire. Yeah, you can see that, uh, all the different shades there in the stone. Yeah, it looks really, it looks pretty cool. It's cool. Oh, we got a zomber down there. Oh, you found a way down. Okay. Yeah, just kind of loop around a little bit. Um, but the last time I think we were here, we were uh, doing stuff, we were discussing uh, our love of uh, fine literature. <laughs> yep. And, uh, you know, I think I think we left off talking about... No, ah! oh, I caught fire. Oh, oh and no, I, I'm, a, I'm a dummy. I didn't bring water in my bucket. I got an empty oh, bucket. Yeah. Can you not kill these one shot with an iron sword by jumping? I don't, I don't oh. think so. Yes, not. I would max. Anyway, sorry. There we go. No, the last thing we talked about was, I don't have any room in my inventory. I'm totally stuffed with the things we need right. to carry. I'll carry um, this stuff. So Let's I think yeah, we left off talking about way. Harry Potter and the discussion. Harry Potter. Uh huh. Of of all things. Which Potter -esque. Just quick quick little thing about Harry Potter. They uh -huh. are uh, doing the uh, Harry Potter play in London. Starting oh yeah yeah in a yeah. couple weeks called Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Yep. Have you seen the picture? The pictures that they released look awesome. I know the the, the really people they good. have playing the different characters are amazing, and so, I know they have uh, the guy who's playing the grown up Harry looks fantastic. Yeah, they all look really good. Oh my gosh, dude! Is it turning nighttime? And then you got Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. It's coming out uh -huh. soon. On, Which on I am big super screen. excited about. Yeah, it looks really cool. Um, that's one thing I think she, I think... And she's in, uh, she's heavily involved in both of those projects, which is nice. Yeah, yeah. so she wrote the script. Yep. Um, which is really cool to oh, me, because man. now that she's done so many films, or had her work adapted, I think she knows the right way to go about doing... Uh, a movie script, you know, like how to write for film now. Right. I'm, I'm gonna jump down over here. Into the water. Okay. <laughs> it is I'm getting dark, on. and I was hoping to find some sheep, but that's not gonna no happen. Sheep. Um, there's lava over here on that, the kind of at the bottom. I'm gonna dig in next to it. Or because I don't have the, I don't even have a bow, man. Yeah, we are woefully unprepared to be moving around during the night. Yeah, we are. Um, so there was a few things I wanted to I wanted to bring up uh, before. Oh, we got a cave. Um, okay, I'm I'm losing you here entirely. Um, a few uh... things I wanted to bring up uh, before we got into the actual here. I just put a torch down on the bottom. Yeah, I'm coming back. I was just kind of doing some. Advanced scouting. That's, yeah, I can't you even see me over here. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Oh, we got some Hello, dogs. Dogs, dogs um, barking. I do not have. Yeah, I have nothing here. Oh, I mean, I have behind no the lava. <laughs> yeah, I got light. All right. 
Oh, there's so a little, sick. uh... Yeah, a little cave. Cave going on? Come on, dude. That was oh, four hits. Oh, Oh, man, yo, I don't have... Wow. Yeah, here, return, return back this way and we'll... I'll just block it off. Oh. Try it, sucker. Oh. I need... Oh. Woo! I need to get that. We just need to kill some spiders. Yeah, we didn't have, like, any string, did we? Mm -mm. I have two. I have two pieces. Alright. I don't think maybe we shouldn't hide in a hole. Maybe we should just go for Let's it. Let's just go for it. If we head this way, we can. Uh, there's a lot of water, so we can make boats and just kind of boat around a little bit. Okay. Should I just fairly I, safe. I'm just afraid. I'm afraid we're gonna meet skeletons, and it's gonna. Skeletons are the worst. We got shields though. We're, That's we got, true. We got That's this. True. Um, okay, so the, here's one thing I want to talk about before we get back into the book discussion: is the. Uh, the whole thing with uh, No Man's Sky being ah, delayed right. till August, right? Yep. And the fact that the guy who reported it, the guy, on, yeah, the guy uh, who reported it, who had nothing who to do it. with it, yeah, on Kutaku or whatever, yeah, he was getting death threats for reporting that it, it had been delayed, yeah, I, which I mean, I is a... insane. Crafting bench. Oh yeah, yeah, I, I've got one, but it's okay. Um. Here. I could not believe. Here, I'll put a that... I'll put a boat down for you, so you don't have to pick one up. Oh, oh, I already, already. Oh, you here, here, you take some, take some wood there. I don't, I can't even carry that. <laughs> All right, thanks, dude. Oh man, we're really going for it. Oh, well, that's right, new boats. Um, uh... the fact that the guy who reported that he that that the move that the the game was delayed was getting death threats. Yeah, insane. And then, um, you know, Sean Murray was talking. You know, the guy. You know, the, the guy who's making the game from Hello Games was Whoa. like, "This boat is out of control." It's weird, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's really fast. It's faster than I expected. Yeah, holy cow! But I love how they look now. They're so cool. Little oars on the side. Anyway, I just had to say that I was really disappointed, but I was like, "Fine, man, take your time. I want I want the experience to be as yeah. good as it can be." And it's just like six weeks. People are getting. And when here's the thing, I think this is the thing that bothers me the most. And uh, what's his name? Notch even posted something about it on Twitter. Like, when did death threats become a real, legitimate way to show your uh, that you were upset? Yeah, it's the nature of the internet, unfortunately. Which I I can't because here's my thing. I keep thinking how I I could never ever say that to somebody i know even even joking um i mean i don't even do that like i don't even say i'm gonna kill you like 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 when i'm when we're playing you yeah because i just don't think it's funny yeah but how somebody could do that not but it's not just that like i, I mean i can i can see when you know you're joking you say, oh i'm gonna kill you blah blah, blah. but it's not a smart thing to say but i, I can see that happening but right. these are like very detailed and gory death yeah. threats. I know. I will come to your house. Absolutely disgusting. Yeah. Yeah, it's horrible. I, I, I don't get it, and I don't understand it. And two, why would you threaten somebody who's making something for you that you aren't going to enjoy? <laughs> right. You know, because the guy's going to remember who it was who who threatened his life, and maybe not allow you to have the update. <laughs> <laughs> that now that would be funny. That would be amazing. Oh, that would be like amazing. oh, I remember you. Like oh yeah, you want to threaten me? You can't play my game. Yeah, and ooh, we got this is like a river in here, dude. Oh okay. Oh, uh, it's not going that far, but you, these are so much. Oh, there's skeletons. So yeah. Oh, I left shift. Yeah, I can't even pick it up. But yeah, it's definitely gotten way out of hand with the, yeah, with the way people react. So that was just something I wanted to bring up because I couldn't, I just couldn't believe it. Yeah. That um, someone would, I mean, and, and I don't know why I should have been surprised, but I think it was just the fact that this is just a nice guy who's, who's just reporting on hold, it. Yeah. Just like, to say, you know, here, I think, I, I think it may be delayed. You know, oh, watch it. Yeah. Kill that cow for me. Yeah. That's right. I'm like a ninja. Use the environment to my advantage. Yeah. Okay. 
Oh, I don't have any room for bones. Dang, damn it. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I just turned around and you just almost whack. just took your head off. Yeah, that's amazing. Where can uh, we find some sheep? Jeez. We need sheep. Oh, spiders. Hello, spider. Spider. Hey. Speaking of that voice, I'm, ass I'm assuming that voice is coming from Lord of the Rings. Uh huh. I'm gonna get to meet Sean Austin on Saturday. Shut up. Yeah. Is that Comic Con in Phoenix? Oh, that's gonna be a blast. That'll be cool. He's he's a sweetheart. Man. He's like such a nice guy. Yeah, he seems like a really nice guy. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. So who's so for this Comic Con business? Who's uh, who's the other big people um, that are gonna be there? Didn't honestly, you there were a few other big name people that were gonna go, and now they can't because of filming or something. Weren't there Doctor um, Who people? But who yeah, there's there? there's a bunch of Doctor Who people. Um, Billy Piper. No, that would be amazing. Which, yeah, I'm a huge fan of her. She was awesome. Uh, she played a rose. And, um... Ooh, spiders. I'm blanking out on her name, but in the show, she was River Song. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember her uh, real name. I forget the actress's name. Yeah, she's she's okay. awesome. I'm a huge fan of hers. Oh, my gosh. And then the I guy who think. played Strax, which is going to be weird, because obviously don't really know what he actually looks like, because he's a big... Yeah. Blue guy. Uh oh. I pissed off an Enderman. No. Okay. Yeah. You better hide, dude. Uh, watch out. I'm gonna I'm die. Trying to help. I'm gonna die. Oh, no. <laughs> oh shoot. No, no, no. no oh, no. I got so ambushed. I would have been fine if that zombie hadn't got me. Yeah, I was coming up behind, and I think I may have knocked him towards you. Oh, man. Oh, stinking. Well, okay, wait. Oh, I'm crap, a very long ways away from you. Oh, there's a skeleton right here. No. I have no defense. Run. Um, oh, man, you have so much stuff here. Um, here, hold on. Yeah, uh, just try and make a chest if you can. What is it? Everybody, look away. Nothing, <laughs> Nothing happened. happened. <laughs> Nothing oh, happened. the we'll freaking see. dude is still here. Yeah, oh, yeah you want to tussle? Yeah, you want to tussle? Yeah, Come now here. you're not afraid. Oh, get messed up. Ooh, still making noise, though. Ooh. Oh, you still got that? Here. I hate that noise. Yeah, I do too. Alright, let's get rid of some diorite. Don't need that. Just gonna get rid of that. Yeah, so, um, Strax, and then the girl, the lizard girl, who's, like, with Strax all the time. Oh, yeah, 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 like, kind of like his master, almost. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember her name. Um, got so <clears throat> much crap. Okay, I got your workbench. Oh, okay. Because I already had one. Do I have anything? All right. Are we good? I think I'm good. I think so. Okay, well, we'll just move on then this way. Further. Which is that? Reorganize. Oh, you got my food. Oh, did I? Uh, some cooked steak. I just have my steak. Sure, you didn't pick it up? I only, I had like 10. 10 or 12. Huh. Well, you can take half of mine. I just had uh, 17. Yeah, you trying to steal it from me? Uh uh. Gosh dang it, man. There. Just need a few. Get me going. Okay. There you go. Sweet. All right, let's head head out. Ooh, what? I can make. Did you give me twenty four? What? <laughs> it was half for me. It was uh, it was seventeen. What? Yeah, it was seventeen. Yeah, you definitely so... picked up mine. Yeah, it just wasn't showing in my. It just wasn't showing. That's uh -uh, weird. That's, that's weird. There's a bug. Fix your game, Jeb. Fix your game, <laughs> Jeb. Fix your game, Notch. Yeah. Uh, what uh, am I doing? Oh, I'm we can make running randomly. Uh, I have. Do you want to stop yeah. around here? I'm gonna go. Wait, where are you? Are you still down there? Okay, just stay in this oh, area for a minute. I'm gonna run. 
okay up to the top of this hill and try and get a good look around see if there's anything interesting this wouldn't be that bad actually right right here in this area we could clear it out and do like a cool cabin or something yeah that'd be cool oh um okay so getting back to the book discussion there were a couple things i wanted to make sure and discuss before we moved past it yeah um i even wrote things down so i wouldn't forget <laughs> yeah um and i think i mentioned but i'm not entirely sure that uh Probably, apart from C.S. Lewis, my literary hero is Ray Bradbury. Um, okay. He he is prob seriously one of the greatest writers I have ever read in my entire life. He did this. Um, uh, I mean, of course, he wrote the kind of stuff that I love, which is like um, Twilight Zoney, science fictiony stuff. Um, but he wrote it. I mean, he wrote it very skillfully, and it's actually really well written. Um, his big famous one, you know, is Fahrenheit 451, which I, which is amazing, and I loved it. Um, uh, and uh, then the you know, Martian Chronicles, Something Wicked This Way Comes, all these classic books. But the thing for me that I love the most were his short stories, and um, it was really his. Uh, Martian Chronicles is is essentially a collection of short stories that's kind of loosely bound together as a novel, but. Um, his writing is amazing. Like, he's very. I think the thing that's so cool for me about him is that he is uh, e very economical with how he writes. So, where it would take somebody a paragraph and a half to to describe how a kid's mouth looks when they speak, he can he can just pick out the phrase. This is what it's. It's kind of it's a weird phrase, but it's perfect. He talks about this baby. It's sitting in a in its. Uh, in its, uh, you know, like a whatever seat. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he talks about it having pinkly elastic lips, which <laughs> Interesting. is is perfect. I mean, if you think about a, a little, little baby just mouthing words and mouthing sounds, that's fantastic. Um, that's a perfect explanation of it. And he does that all the way through his writings. He's just, he, he's, he's very, uh, his writing is very lyrical and um, almost poetic. It's beautiful, beautiful stuff, and um, so he was one of my biggest, uh, oh, you know, like my biggest, one of my biggest literary heroes, and I've read almost as much of his stuff as I can. Um, really cool guy. Nice. Um, so I, I want to make sure and throw that out there. Uh, what do you think? Do you want to build down here? We could build. There's that little island across the. There's like across a little the water there. Yeah, that'd be pretty sweet. Yeah, let's go take a look. Um, and have you ever read any Bradbury stuff? I don't think I have actually. Like even like that Fahrenheit 451 is even, the big one. I haven't even read that. Oh my gosh, dude! You've, that's that's a. If it's you ever a get rabbit. a chance, yeah, get them. Oh, oh there's our boats. There's yeah, these are our boats. So yeah, we, we could. Uh, yeah, we could kind of clear the top of this and build a house as like an entrance because it's. That's kind of cool looking. There's yeah, that is cool. It's kind of I was hoping it was more just like round, but it kind of angles back this way, which we could kind of build back. I think it would work I best. Actually, probably leave these cows. We can breed them. Yeah, probably right here actually. It would right be a place to build. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we can take this down one level, and I'll start doing that. All right. Um, so if you ever get a chance, if you if you want to try some of his stuff, he's got a collection of short stories that was put out by uh, Vintage Publishing called Vintage Vintage Bradbury. Oh, okay. um, and nice. it's, it's it's really fantastic. It's got some of his best work. Uh, I'm just gonna drop off building stuff in here, and it's really worth it's really worth reading. Um. So anyway, so there's that, vintage and there's Bradbury. Vintage, vintage Bradbury. It's like 21 short stories, and that was one of my first kind of introductions to him. There's another one that was put out last year, maybe a couple years ago, just called Bradbury 100, and it's uh, he personally went through before he passed away and picked out a hundred of his favorite stories, the ones that meant the most to him, and they collected them all in this one big book, and it's it's wonderful. Nice. Um, so that one's that's a cool one. Um, 
But there's another guy too that was a big influence on on me as far as uh, realizing that you can do anything you want to in books and and story. Uh, it's a guy named Roger Zelazny who uh, I think he passed away late mid mid to late eighties. Then he wrote a series called The Chronicles of Amber, and uh, not surprisingly, not a lot of people know about it, but it is absolutely astoundingly good. Uh, it's a series of ten books. The first five are the best. They get a little derivative towards the end, but um, so, so good. Um, so that's one I would love. Uh, that's like one of the ones I always try and get people to read. That so if you sounds ever... familiar. Oh, it's so good. It's one of the ones, uh, it, it actually is the one that kind of started me liking stories about memory, uh, because without giving anything away, the main character wakes up, he doesn't know who he is, and he's in just a ho uh, in a in a hospital bed, Ooh. and so it's like okay. And this was like before this was happening all over the place, you know. Before, right? Uh, that was like a common thing. Kind of um, a common <laughs> yeah. framework to build on for a story. Yeah. So that, and and the thing that's cool too is that the written the the writing's really quick. It's written in first person, which I love because not many people can do that really really well, and he does it really well. Yeah. And it's almost told. It's almost told in this amazing kind of film noir -y kind of 70s language. Oh, it is so, so good. And it's so much fun. Like the ideas in it, it's one of those things where you'll read something and go, hold on, really? And you go back and yes, he he just did that. And it's so cool. <laughs> nice. Um, anyway, so that that was one. Uh, I, the only other one I wanted to mention was, uh, this one's kind of a unique one for me because not a lot of people like this series uh, because... Uh, of the main character, um, it's one of the first books that I read where the main character is not really a nice guy, uh, but it gives him a place to grow. Um, but it's, there's a series by Stephen Donaldson called The Chronicles of Thomas Covenant, the Unbeliever. Um, Interesting. And it's about a guy who is uh, who is an author and who contracts leprosy. And so he's lost the ability to basically feel anything. And somehow he gets whisked away into this fantasy world. And I'm, it, it sounds cheesy and kind of weird, strange. But in this, when he's in this fantasy place, he thinks he's going mad. And he starts regaining his feeling. And so he's positive that he's, that he's losing his mind. <laughs> but he's really a hor he's kind of a horrible guy. Because he doesn't think any of this stuff is real. He doesn't think anything. Uh, he doesn't really think there's any consequences to any actions that he does. Yeah. So it leads to some kind of dark stuff, and uh, but the writing is astounding. It's so so good. Uh, he the thing I like about the guy too is he uses really, he's got a really great command of vocabulary. He's not afraid to throw out really kind of older books that you haven't heard uh, words you haven't heard in a long time. Yeah. Um. So, uh, but yeah, Here really good. So we can see the sunset. Yeah. So th those are the last ones I wanted to mention um, before we moved on in books. Was there anything that you... So I just, yeah, I was trying to think if there's anything I have read a lot. For me, I mean, we already talked to Harry Potter. I've read those books mm -hmm. so many times. Uh, obviously, Lord of the Rings, we talked about that. Yep. I'm trying to think. There's a bunch of other books I've read, and some of them... I've read a lot of Christian stuff, and... Uh -huh. To be honest, I, I, I hate to say this, but a lot of Christian authors are terrible. <laughs> like they're just it's, they lean so much on the religious. Yeah, it's like, really true. The religious cliches, uh -huh. and it just makes for a really terrible story most of the time. I know it. Like there's and, there's a yeah, way you can you can make a good story out of you know religious topics, but they yeah. just they lean too much on like the cliche aspect of it. Yeah. And it just gets really just kind of lame. <laughs> yeah. So no, a lot of Ted Ted Decker, um who's the other guy? I can't remember. Oh, one series though, um Frank Pretty, uh great oh, author. Yeah, the, uh yeah, he's, he's a Christ Christian really author. Good. He does uh he did a series of books. I can't remember what the names of them were. This well yeah, the I'm the one the big one for me was This Present Darkness. Yeah, This Present Darkness and uh Out of the Darkness or I can't remember what the second one was called. Yeah, I don't remember. Amazing, amazing books. 
Yeah. Uh, but he also wrote like like a young adult series that I read through. <laughs> really, really interesting. Um, but the other big one, and this is going to sound really, really weird, but it's the only book <laughs> that my brother has ever actually read. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it's called I Am the Cheese. I Am the Cheese. I Am the Cheese. And it's written by an author who's very controversial. His name is uh, Robert Cormier. Um, his, and I think, I don't think I'm the cheese, but I think his other book was like banned in most schools. Really? Um, just because it was, and it wasn't necessarily because it was anything bad, but it was just more of like mature topics because it was uh-huh. geared towards young adults, but it had some very adult themes in it that he felt yeah. like that younger people needed to know about. Right. Um, so it's kind of like he kind of pushed the envelope and a lot of schools banned him. Um, but I Am the Cheese is an incredible, incredible story. Um, not it, That one is a lot less of kind of mature themes or anything like that. But yeah, my brother, I just remember my brother read it so many times. And that was like the only book he ever read. <laughs> and uh, I read through it and it was, it was a really, it's a really, really good book. It's one of those yeah, ones where you're just not quite that. sure what's going on. And then yeah. at the end, it all comes together and you're just like, oh my gosh, <laughs> you know, oh, wow. just the mind, mind blown kind of a feeling, but that's cool. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Well, um, and the other one too, that we kind of ha- have in common is, is, uh, kind of a mutual appreciation for John Green. Oh yes, of course. Um, I can't believe we yeah. didn't talk about that. Yeah. Um, because um, I Fault in Our Stars, Fault in Our Stars, Looking for I mean, Alaska, uh huh, Paper Towns is Paper my Towns. favorite of his. Um, which sadly the film, oh, the film just the didn't end. do it. For the me. end. It was so good up until the end. Yeah, the, the end, end was just, just completely made not... the the story pointless. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I and the thing I like about it, I like about John Green especially, is the fact that he's able to. Um, he he writes the dialogue of these kids in a very literary and intelligent way. They're speaking in a way that people don't speak, but it still rings true. Right. And it's that's really hard to do. And um, they don't all sound like him either, which I appreciate. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I do. I like him quite a bit. Yeah. For me, uh, Fault in Our Stars was amazing. Yeah, it, it was the, the book really, and the movie. Really, really, I think they did a really good job with the movie. I agree. Um, oh, and I, I have to throw out there, and I know some pe- some people would give me flack for it, but I don't care. I have to throw out Nicholas Sparks. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm a sucker. My... I'm a sucker for some of his his books, not all of them. Some of them are yeah. pretty derivative, but a couple of them stand out. Definitely the Notebook. Mm-hmm. Um, what was the other one? The uh, Safe Haven, another good one. Uh, the Lucky One. I never saw the movie, but I, I read the book. The book was pretty good. Um, a couple of his other ones just kind of were kind of the same story. Yeah. I mean, all of his books honestly are kind of the same story, but he does such a good job at like developing the the relationships, and they just seem like so genuine. And the characters, you just you really feel like you get to know them. Which uh, I mean, that's J.K. Rowling's uh, strength as well, which I love. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. Cause her uh, I mean, actually, I still haven't read uh, her like mystery one, but the one she came out with after Harry Potter is called Casual Vacancy. Not the greatest book, and you know, once critics found out, or actually before critics found out who it was, because she had originally released it under a uh, pen name or whatever, a pseudonym. Yeah, pseudonym. Yeah. Um, it got kind of panned. <laughs> like it was, it was not the greatest reviews. And then as soon as everyone found out, it was like, oh, this is an amazing oh, story. It's fantastic. Yeah. But. My, my my feeling on it is I, I really like the story, but again, yeah. it's all about the characters. Like you really yeah. get to know the characters really well in that story, and you feel like you're a part of that town and what they're going through and stuff. And but yeah, so that's cool. That's yeah, kind of ones I'm, I've been thinking of. 
I was trying to think. I think that's. Ooh, I oh, and I, I got to throw out uh, Alice in Wonderland. I just read through that recently again because the Alice Through the Looking Glass came out. I had never oh, seen yeah, yeah. the uh, the Tim Burton version of uh, Alice in Wonderland. So I actually went back and watched that as well, and it's weird. <laughs> it <laughs> Which, is. It's really strange. Like, yeah. uh, you got to expect it's Tim Burton, but. Yeah. I guess I was going into it thinking that it was a direct, like, this is directly from the book. Oh, yeah. No, but it's no. not. Like, they make references as, like, the book happened before the movie, like, right. in previous times. And she's still the same Alice, but this is, like, her second time going into Wonderland. Right. And they make jokes about it and stuff, which I thought was really weird. And, but to me, what annoyed me about it was they made the references to the original Alice in Wonderland, but the references were wrong. Yeah. And it was just like, what? <laughs> like, if you're going to just throw a reference in there, at least get it right. <laughs> Did they, or were they like referencing the, the Disney film, maybe? No. Or? Oh, yeah. I, th I think that's what it was because uh, it's been, pff, I haven't seen the, the Disney version and, you know, the animated one in yeah. years since I was a little kid, probably. But uh, my wife had commented that uh, a couple of those scenes were directly from that one. Okay. And so I think yes. maybe that's what it was. All right. But, but yeah. So I haven't read Alice Through the Looking Glass yet. Um, that's kind of next on my list because I, I we just I just saw that movie recently. So right. Um, that was I actually. I mean, it, it's gotten pretty bad reviews and it's done terrible in the box office. But that also could be because of the whole Johnny Depp situation. That's him true. being in trouble. But um, I actually enjoyed it, which is weird because normally I don't enjoy movies like that. Um, <laughs> movies in general <laughs> well like especially movies with a lot of this weird CG stuff you know yeah computer generated graphics and it just looks weird and yeah. I mean and to be fair the plot itself like the main plot was just awful it was just really dumb it didn't make any sense at all and I think you, they even make a comment at one point in the movie where they're just like I don't really understand why we're doing this but we're doing it <laughs> But then the subplots were just phenomenal, and the way they they all kind of joined together and played off of each other was just I thought was really good, and That's made awesome. for an entertaining movie for sure. Yeah, it's I, uh, it's so rarely that we get to go see a movie because yeah. of, you know having kids and stuff that we really really pick and choose <laughs> what right. we make an effort to go see. So I I don't definitely, know definitely skip that one. I yeah, I, I, I think um, I'm trying to think of the last movie we saw in the theater. It's sad that I don't even remember. Oh, it was Star Wars. Oh, Star Wars, yep, yeah, of course. Yeah, the new one. Yeah. Uh, which we ended up going to see twice, which nice. is a big deal. Yeah, <laughs> the kids the kids were just like, what? We, what? Did we see it again in the theater? That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Um,. Okay, so uh, let's see. There was something that was coming to mind as you were as you were talking about that. Oh, I've never, uh, for whatever reason, along with like um, Gulliver's Travels, Alice in Wonderland has always, and, and the other one is like Wizard of Oz. Th those are three or four books that have never really interested me that much yeah and i've tried to read them but they've always been slightly honestly because yeah i don't know and, and because i had it's a, stuff, it should be stuff that i would enjoy but yeah. i've never been able to get into them i had a very different like memory of alice in wonderland i think it's because of the disney movie and i think the yeah. disney movie kind of does a disservice to mm -hmm. uh, lewis carroll um because it's not at all like the book. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it uses like some of the same characters, but the story is like totally different because the book is really just Alice as an observer who sees all these weird things happening and she doesn't even know what's going on. Yeah. And she's not really very active in the world, but you know, in the movie, she's a very active participant mm -hmm. and even, you know, changing certain events and stuff like that. And like the thing that's kind of funny with the, the Tim Burton version is he, places a lot of emphasis on the hatter and like right. i think the hatter has one line in the book and that's it like oh maybe oh to be fair probably three or four but it's like very very minimal 
you know it's like so you, he's not even like a character that you even think of after the fact it's kind of funny huh. yeah that's weird and obviously and i've read a little bit about uh alice in wonderland recently just kind of diving into it and uh some of the controversy behind uh lewis carroll um I think his name is Ho- his real name is uh, something Hogson Hogson or Hodgson uh, Hodgson I think that's right Hodgson Hodgson something like that yeah and Lewis Carroll was just a, a pseudonym um, and he was a math teacher at Oxford University which I've actually visited and seen uh, where they think that he got some of his inspiration in uh, the Great Hall in the the school that he taught at there's that's a couple awesome. of weird things like there's a on the fireplace the i can't i don't know the term for it but those little like metal things that hold in the wood like on the side they have these weird long necks with like a a head and that's where they think he kind of got inspiration for the scene where uh alice when she grows for the first time she actually gets stretched out and she has this really long neck and a head and the illustrator actually if you look at the original illustrations it looks exactly like that at the school it's kind of crazy so there's certain little things like that around the school that where they think you got inspiration. That's cool. And there's actually like a couple of characters, Alice and I think the Hatter and another character in the window panes in that great hall. Oh, nice. It's kind of cool. And the, they have uh, stained glass windows. But, that's yeah, awesome. That's pretty, pretty cool. But he was a weird, now, he was places, a weird guy, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is one of the things, one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't go to uh cambridge and visit when i was in the uk yeah. and go and see like you know the was it the frog and the toad i think it's the name of the place where the inklings jared tolkien and c.s lewis and all those guys used to get together i forget the name of the pub that they used to go to i yeah i actually went to those pubs in uh oh, in oxford i so badly yeah wished that i had had made just said you know forget it i'm just gonna go because i had yeah i had the euro pass and i could have done it but i didn't oh, want to go i didn't want to go by myself yeah uh i wanted to have somebody with me and nobody wanted to go and oh. so i was like oh man i really that's that's a big regret of mine. Yeah, there's a uh, something eagle as a pub. That's it. That's it. It's something, like the can't remember the name of it. Something eagle. I think you're right. Yeah, the infinite the eagle or something like that. Yeah, I can't remember the name of it. But yeah, we actually ate at that pub, and there's another one that they said that um, C.S. Lewis used to go to all the time. We ate, we ate there too. It's pretty cool. It's yeah, pretty I crazy love... to think about how you know some of these. Ugh. Some of these amazing influential people. Well, you know, can you imagine though? Kind of hung out in the pub. <laughs> That's the thing I think that gets to me the most. Can you imagine? You've got you have C.S. Lewis writing uh, screw tape letters, right? Yeah. So you've got uh, Tolkien writing the the beginning of Fellowship of the Ring. And they're coming together and they're saying, okay, well, here's the new chapter that I've got. Let's just, I'll read it out and you guys yeah. just let me have it, right? <laughs> Can you imagine <laughs> what it would be like to sit there and hear that stuff for the first time and just go, this, you know, I, and I'm sure that they were more like, well, I would do this and change this and maybe yeah, it like, it's no big deal, analytical. like whatever. Uh, but the thought of that is so cool that all these things that are like pr- predominantly like, predominantly, that's the wrong word, but basically world changing things pieces of literature yeah are just you know they're sitting around smoking pipes and drinking beer and <laughs> just talking about stuff yeah and, uh, that i would that's like you know when they have those questions like if you want to if you could have three people in for dinner yeah i, I would not want to have them i would want to go there yeah and just sit in the background and watch exactly it'd be a fly on the wall oh my gosh it'd be incredible yeah so cool uh, did you start a stopwatch, by the way? No, we we're so far over time. It's not even funny. <laughs> Maybe this will be this will be two episodes or something. I don't know. It's been it about up. fifty minutes. So okay, I think I don't know. <laughs> I totally forgot to check the time. Yeah, I have a feeling this one's going to take a little bit more editing. Yeah, just a bit. Just a little but bit. Not, not too much. All right. But that's well, going to do I it. Guess, yeah, I guess that's going to be it for today. I started working on the. Uh, the foundation of whatever the crap we're gonna do up here. I don't know what even what it's gonna be yet. <laughs> nice. But I'm just digging around looking for some some goodies. Oh, look what I just found. Diamonds. Hello. What a way to end it. Yep. Well, thank you so much for joining us, people. And uh Thank you, thank you. Yeah, we will see you next time. Okay. Any ideas, any comments? 
Oh, please do. Yeah. Please, please leave comments. It makes it a yeah, lot more we, interesting. We love comments. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Okay. See ya. See you next time. <laughs>